Now we are going to address a very important question from the point of view of the auctioneer. How to maximize the revenue? So far we have only discussed about the truthfulness, but uh, now we not only want to reveal the information truthfully, but we also uh, want to maximize the payment that has been made uh, by all, uh, all these agents. Now, uh, when we are talking about the revenue optimality, and that is what we mean by optimal auctions, uh, we have to assume some sort of a prior over the, uh, uh, over the types or the valuations of the agents. And why is that? Uh, if we uh, try to do a non-prior, uh, try to maximize the revenue from a non-prior setting, we'll have to consider something like a worst case uh, revenue. And the worst case revenue might not be that, uh, that good. Uh, it can be very, uh, very less compared to what is, what is possible to earn in, in practice. And the reason uh, being that uh, when you are selling an object, when the auctioneer is selling an object, it might also have some information about the, uh, about the valuations of the buyers from their previous interactions. If there is an object which is being uh, sold over time uh, or similar kind of objects being sold uh, in an auction uh, over time, uh, then it has some sort of a prior that what the valuation distribution is and accordingly we can define the, uh, the, the expected revenue that you can earn from this mechanism. And that is the reason we will now shift to the Bayesian setting and we will redefine these notions of incentive compatibility and individual rationality in the Bayesian setting. So Bayesian incentive compatibility we have already discussed uh, uh, very early in this, uh, in this mechanism design uh, segment. So it says that if we, so now we are going to define BIC in the context of uh, single object allocation. Now, the, uh, assuming that the type set are, uh, are intervals between 0 and bi uh, for uh, agent i and the common prior uh, is, uh, is defined uh, on top of that uh, type profile. So, it is a Cartesian product over all the types of all these agents and let us assume that this uh, lowercase g denotes the density of, uh, uh, of that common prior distribution which is a, which is a CDF. Now, uh, with this notation g minus i, s minus i given s i, uh, we are going to define, we are going to denote the conditional distribution over s minus i, the types of the type vector of the all other agents given agent i's type uh, which is s i. So, uh, what we are assuming that agent i knows its own type, uh, this is something like an interim state where it knows its own type, but it does not know the types of the others. Uh, it only can predict or have a belief over that uh, which is probabilistic. Similarly, lowercase g minus i is just the density uh, and all these things uh, s minus i given s i, this is derived from the, uh, from the original uh, g using the Bayes rule as, as before. Now what we are going to say is that every mechanism, uh, so the mechanism is again uh, mapping on the type profile. In, into an uh, allocation which could be a probabilistic allocation um, and, and this this payments that uh, the actual payments that has been made after the realization of the types this induces an expected allocation so uh, when the agent uh, agent i does not know the types of the other players it can only predict what will be the uh, allocation in an expected way and we'll define that shortly so it can define the expected allocation and the expected payment according to those uh, uh, common prior capital G and its density is lowercase g. Uh, and those payment, uh, this expected allocation and expected payment rule we are going to define by this alpha and pi, the vector pi. So what is this alpha? So alpha again has components uh, for each of these players. So this is the ith component of that uh, allocation. But now notice that it is no longer a function of s minus i because we are going to take the expectation with respect to s minus i and uh, therefore it is only function of two things what it, uh, its true type is and uh, what is its reported type is. So now it is going to be defined in the following way. So uh, look at this, uh, this part which was there in the previous uh, setup also when we were talking about uh, this uh, uh, randomized allocation, but the uh, randomized allocation uh, was in the uh, prior free setting. So it was defined for 
the the entire type profile when SI uh, so agent I uh, sees its type which is SI and the uh, type of the other players is S minus I. This was the probability of allocation of that agent uh, of that object to that agent. Now, uh, on top of that, what we are going to do, because agent I does not deterministically know what uh, S minus I is, it is uh, expecting that with respect to that belief, which is S minus I given TI. So TI um, is its uh, true type. So uh, the belief will depend only on the true type, while it might report something different. So uh, based on its report, the mechanism will work, but it will always uh, evaluate that mechanism according to its true type and that is why there is this uh, difference so notice that this one is the same one which it has reported and this one this type is the same one uh, that is its true type and uh, at this point we are also uh, uh, i would like to make one comment that uh, uh, we have seen deterministic mechanisms where the allocation is exactly giving the object deterministically to one agent or uh, to some other agent. Um, we have seen in the previous setup in the, uh, the, the module on uh, Myerson's mechanism that uh, you can also give randomized allocations. Now that is after everybody has reported. So this randomization is happening on the side of the mechanism designer. So mechanism designer may toss a coin or do some randomization and give the object probabilistically to one of these agents. So this is one level of randomization uh, that happens at the mechanism designer level. But the uh, the probability or the, uh, the prior based thing, so uh, this, uh, this randomization is actually happening at the agent's place. So the agent is uh, creating its belief or has a belief based on their G minus I, the common prior. And it is uh, taking the expectation with respect to that belief. So that is another randomization how uh, this S minus I's are getting generated in uh, in agent I's own mind. And we are taking the uh, taking the product of these two different probabilities and uh, then taking the expectation over the uh, over this S minus I's. So this is what I wanted to keep in mind because whenever we are talking about the single object allocation, particularly uh, when we are talking about Bayesian incentive compatibility or some guarantees in the Bayesian world uh, and also our mechanism is also randomized then we have these two levels of expectation and the first expectation is coming from the agent side which is the uh, the belief uh, over the types of the other players and the second level of randomization is coming from the mechanism designer side how it is allocating the object to the different players so something to keep in mind so similarly, we can define what is the expected payment for this player i. Again, si is the reported uh, type and ti is the true type. And as before, we are going to take the expectation with respect to the, uh, the this posterior distribution. So you can call this a posterior given its own type. It is uh, taking the uh, uh, generating the belief over the types of the other agents, taking the expectation with respect to the actual payment, which uh, which is uh, given by the mechanism. Because it is reporting SI, the mechanism will decide uh, the payment according to that. And assuming that the other players are reporting uh, S minus I in, in, in truthful manner. So here the, the probability can only be defined in terms of the uh, uh, true valuation profile, not what they do if they misreport. So if that happens, then this is the expected payment for player I. And therefore, the expected utility will be just that uh, you are, uh, so when agent I is reporting his type truthfully, let's say, so uh, SI is actually equal to TI. In that setting, you can write it as uh, TI multiplied by that expected probability of this allocation minus the expected payment. So this is uh, sort of the interim utility, utility that this agent I is getting. Now, uh, now we are in the right position to define what is Bayesian incentive compatibility. Um, as before, uh, this uh, uh, the inequality that when it is reporting its type truthfully, uh, the, the expected payoff or expected utility that they are getting is at least as much as when it is misreporting to some SI. And this inequality should get satisfied for all uh, SI and TI in capital TI. Note that there is no, no S minus I anymore because that has already been taken uh, expectation over. 
and as before we are going to say that this allocation rule is Bayesian implementable if there exists some payment such that this f comma p is bic note that we are going to call that this mechanism this f comma p mechanism to be Bayesian incentive compatible of course um, implicitly we are assuming that there exists an um, a common prior G and we are taking the expectation uh, of uh, uh, of this allocations and the payments according to that G. So in this setup we are going to assume uh, the independence of uh, of all these priors of this uh, uh, the distribution over these types and also then we are going to do the characterization of BIC mechanisms very similar to what we have done for the DSIC mechanisms and we'll see a very similar result which is also a result due to Meyerson but now for the BIC mechanisms. So what we are going to uh, assume is that this uh, the joint distribution of, uh, uh, of all the um, types of the agents is decomposable uh, in a product form and therefore I mean this is essentially just saying that all these types are generated independently from each other now we are going to use for, for simplicity whenever agent i is reporting its type truthfully so this ti is the same as the type that is its true type um, that alpha of ti uh, is the shorthand for that notation instead of writing it twice. So now an allocation rule is going to be non-decreasing in expectation so remember that the earlier we were saying it is non-decreasing and we were just using the fact that f uh, fi of ti t minus i is at least as much of uh, as a, a, a phi of si uh, t minus i and whenever ti is greater than si so we define this as non-decreasingness now we are going to apply uh, the expectation with respect to the prior and uh, we are going to define that uh, it, it is going to be non-decreasing in expectation uh, if uh, for every si which is strictly less than ti uh, instead of fi now the expected allocation is non decreasing so that is a non decreasing in expectation quite straightforward definition uh, we will note that this rules that are non decreasing um, um, that we have defined in the previous case so all those rules so uh, all the characterization results that we did and all the examples that we have given earlier uh, which were non decreasing uh, they are always non-decreasing in expectation because they are non-decreasing for every t minus i. So of course, if you take expectation with respect to that, they are also going to be um, following the non-decreasingness in expectation. But now, uh, what can happen is we can possibly have more rules, and we'll see examples of that. More rules that are non-decreasing in expectation, and uh, that uh, opens up a lot of lot many um, uh, other mechanisms which, on which we can actually try to maximize our revenue. Okay, so let's first discuss the, the characterization result, the result which is very similar to the Meyerson's characterization of uh, DSIC mechanism. So here we are trying to do the characterization of the BIC mechanisms. So you're going to say that this uh, mechanism, the result goes as follows. Um, this uh, mechanism F comma P uh, in the independent prior setting, so that is what we are uh, looking at is BIC if and only if two conditions hold and those conditions are very much analogous to the uh, DSIC condition F is non decreasing in expectation now and also this uh, payment formula satisfies this uh, uh, integral formula which is very similar so your uh, uh, the, the expected payment at type TI again notice that there is no T minus I anymore because they have all been expected over the expected uh, payment is uh, um, has uh, three components first one is a constant component the second one is alpha ti times alpha of ti so you see f uh, fi has all been replaced with alpha i ti and similarly for the last component which is the integral part and this should hold for all ti in capital ti so this is um, this is the uh, as you can see is a bayesian version of the earlier theorem but uh, the proof can follow in very similar lines so we will not go and get into that proof you can use the ideas of uh, the same proof and just have to take the expectation at appropriate places and redo the proof i leave that as an exercise now uh, since we said that there are more nde rules uh, than the nd rules uh, so um, let us look at one example where uh, it is NDE but not ND. 
So, uh, so let's assume that there are two players and each of them have uh, five uh, possible types. Uh, their type set has five possibilities and they can be represented in the form of a matrix. So the, the five, uh, uh, five different types for player one is given here and the five possible types are given here. So each of these blocks are actually representing each type profile. And now uh, we can, uh, so this matrix is showing that uh, under which conditions player one uh, is getting allocated. So they are re represented with one. The, uh, the slots that are blank, that the agent two is getting allocated uh, the object. Now, how can we uh, see that whether uh, alpha one T one? So uh, let's look at alpha one T one, uh, the expected allocation for player one under this T one. You can see when T1 is uh, is having this value, then uh, the object is getting allocated to player 2 under all possible circumstances. So if you are actually looking at the, uh, the corresponding allocation uh, with probability 1, uh, it is going to player 2 and with probability 0, it is going to um, uh, go to player 1. So therefore, this expected uh, allocation, you can do this calculation, the expected allocation uh, for player one when t1 is equal to this this value here is going to be zero similarly it is zero here as well but here it has a probability of one over five because there are five possibilities in uh, in one of those cases it is getting an allocation uh, in other four cases it is getting allocated to t2 so if you take the expectation over that it will be one by five similarly if the uh, t1 is this then it is two by five and at this value it is 3 by 5 so you can see that as t1 is increasing because t1 is increasing in this direction uh, the uh, alpha, uh, alpha 1 t1 is also uh, monotonically non-decreasing similarly you can look at the alpha 2 t2 so because here and now you will have to look at count the number of blank boxes because we are considering alpha 2 that is uh, allocation probability of player 2 so this will be 3 by 5 uh, in this case it increases then it goes to 3 by 5 again. Here it is 4 by 5 because there are now 4 blank boxes. Here also it is 4 by 5. And finally it is 1 because it is getting allocated to player 2 uh, altogether. So uh, for both these players, they are monotone. Uh, but you can uh, already begin to see that it is not monotone for uh, F1, T1, T2 or F2, T1, T2. So you can see that if T2 was uh, having this particular value here, uh, then um, the allocation, uh, so if uh, we fix T2 at this point, then uh, player 1 is not getting the allocation here, then it is getting the allocation here, but again not getting the allocation here. So this violates the monotonicity condition. So you can also create an example for, uh, for T2 where it is violating that, but the point is that this, is, uh, this uh, allocation rule is not non-decreasing. So in the Bayesian setting, we can also define the analog of the individual rationality property. So we are going to say that uh, a mechanism is uh, uh, interim individually rational. So this is something that uh, happens after agent uh, I has observed its own type, but it is still speculating what is the type of the other player. So the expected utility or expected payoff of this agent is always going to be non-negative uh, at that interim level for all types of this player. So uh, if it, uh, it is uh, deciding whether to participate after watching its own type, it should always participate because that is, uh, that is the sort of uh, uh, the belief system is telling it. Okay, so now we can actually extend the result of uh, that uh, Meyerson characterization for BIC mechanisms to BIC and IIR mechanism. So you can see that uh, the mechanism uh, F comma P is BIC and IIR if and only if the first two conditions are coming directly from the characterization of BIC and the third condition is telling you that if uh, the, the, the constant part in this integral should be non-positive. This is something that we have also seen in the individual rationality uh, condition uh, when we discussed the, uh, the prior free setting. So here the, this constant is go going to be non-positive. So we will not go again to prove this uh, very formally, but uh, we can give the pointers 
that uh, this uh, conditions one and two that we have said is coming directly from the BIC mechanism. So this is an if and only if condition. So they are equivalent to BIC. So all that we need to prove is to show that uh, IIR along with this uh, conditions one and two are equivalent to three. And that is not very difficult. So uh, in the forward direction, so we want to show that IIR along with uh, one and two are equivalent to three. So we first show that uh, if we assume IIR with one and two, uh, this implies three. So how can we do that? We just need to apply the, uh, uh, the, the condition of IIR. So what is IIR? So this, this one, and we are going to plug the value of Ti to be equal to zero. So therefore this term, this term here vanishes and all that we have is minus pi i zero is going to be um, uh, non-negative, which means uh, this pi i zero should be non-positive. That is uh, very straightforward. We did the similar exercise in the previous case. Now the other direction that if, if we assume uh, condition three, that is if we uh, assume uh, this is true, and also this um, uh, one and two and this uh, inequality is true. So then uh, whether we should have a, a condition of IIR. So how can we do that? We can just uh, uh, write the, the utility of player i. And if we, um, uh, if we now substitute the value of pi i according to that integral formula, what, we, what is left? So because this term will get canceled out, what we will be left with is minus of pi i zero and this integral part and we know that this is a probability distribution so therefore it is going to be non-negative the integral will be non-negative and pi i we already know that this is non-positive so minus of that will be non-negative as well and that will be greater than or equal to zero so this is certainly an IIR thing so all right so we have actually proved this mi as well so we'll use mm, this uh, results appropriately when we are trying to find the optimal mechanism which maximizes the revenue